Profesor Krzysztof Krajewski, uh, the Chair of uh, Criminology, Jagiellonian University, uh, Kraków, Poland, uh, the formerly President of European Society of Criminology, uh, in time 2007-2008, uh, uh, and me, uh, Irena Rzeplińska, a professor of law and uh, criminology and Institute of Law Studies, uh, Polish Academy of Science. So we both are professors of law and criminology. Uh, we are colleagues and it's a pleasure for me to uh, talk uh, with uh, Professor Krzysztof Krajewski about uh, criminology uh, criminology in the world, criminology in the Europe, and uh, criminology in Poland. So, uh, Professor Krajewski is a um, um, professor of law and criminology, and the chair of uh, criminology, but in the University uh, of Jagiellonian University. But please tell me, what is other your affiliation mm -hmm. and function? Uh, well, like most uh, criminologist in Europe and in Poland, my primary background to say is, is law, of course, because I read the law at the law faculty in, in, in at the Jagiellonian University. It was many, many years ago, uh, but it's true. Uh, but uh, I have double background, let's mm -hmm. say, because after I have graduated in law and received my degree in law, um, I have studied also sociology and uh, some people say that this makes me to real criminologist uh, because this double background is really uh, something, mm, uh, well, it's something very useful uh, in doing research in, in criminology but it's so true that this background is not necessarily typical for criminologists in Poland but partly also in Europe uh, because generally, uh, well, in Poland at least, practically all criminology departments or units uh, are connected to law faculties and mostly uh, they are also connected to departments involved in teaching and research on either penal law or prison law or related areas. Probably there are only three, as far as I know, departments, university departments in Poland, which are devoted exclusively to criminology. Uh, and Krakow is one of them. Well, yes. Very pro, <laughs> you are right. <laughs> but my, uh, my question, uh, which I would like to uh, ask you, um, so uh, um, from, from many time ago, it is uh, why criminology? Why criminology? Well, <laughs> um, to a certain extent, mm -hmm. it's accident yeah. uh, or accidental. Uh, well, I studied law and one must remember that it was many, many years ago, 1972-1976, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, and it was under communist regime in uh, Poland. Uh, well, I wanted to study law, mm, but already during my university studies, I was thinking, what am I going to do after mm -hmm. uh, graduating uh, in law? And honestly speaking, due to political situation, due to uh, realities, uh, I was not that much eager uh, to work, uh, for example, as a judge or, or, or public prosecutor, for example, mm -hmm. because it required at that time explicit uh, political uh, yeah. involvement, being a member of the Communist Party. I didn't want to, 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 mm -hmm. to be. Uh, so I was, I, I hoped, uh, that I may have a chance to, to work at the university as, as a teacher, as a researcher mm -hmm. at the law faculty. And uh, it was, I remember my professor 
uh, and founder of the criminology yeah. department at, at the Aguilonian University, uh, who during one of the exams mm, asked me, those were oral exams at that time, so it was direct contact, contact with the professor, uh, uh, asked me whether I would be interested in, um, in working with him at the university because he's just about to, to start organizing criminology department at the law mm -hmm. faculty. Uh, and my answer was immediately yes. I, 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 I'd love to do this. And that's uh, what, what made me to, to, to become more uh, interested in, in issues criminological. Although I would say uh, that generally during my law studies, mm -hmm. I was interested primarily in all matters related to penal law, penal procedure and such mm -hmm. things. I, I was n never uh, very, very fond of civil law or financial business law and such stuff. Yes, so um, we are working in uh, criminology, we both work in criminology about uh, 30 years. So our uh, research work in criminology, uh, this is um, the, uh, um, in Poland, very interesting time, the 30 years, because during this time, uh, so uh, we have, uh, or we had uh, two um, very um, important uh, um, so-called accidents. <laughs> uh, the first is uh, collapse of communist era, uh, in, uh, and from uh, 1989 uh, we start uh, to completely change our uh, political system, economic system, social uh, relation. Uh, so uh, in 2004, and this is the second point, is uh, uh, the Poland uh, was a um, uh, European Union uh, uh, member. So uh, how do you think? Um, mm, uh, how, uh, how it was uh, I I with criminologic research mm -hmm. uh, during the uh, communistic era, what subject, what topics uh, we uh, um, organized and uh, we interested. And the second, what, second question after this, now, mm -hmm. uh, what is the topics and this criminological subject uh, now uh, during the transformation time or uh, now, just now, after the yeah. transformation. Yeah, yeah. So please. Yeah. Well, of course, Poland, although not necessarily Krakow, uh, has a tradition of criminological uh, research starting even before World War II. Mm -hmm. um, many people, of course, know the name of Leon Radzinovich, uh, who uh, became one of the most famous uh, British Creative. criminologists, that his roots were in, uh, in Poland, in Warsaw, partly in Warsaw, but partly in Krakow, because mm -hmm. uh, there was also an episode of, of his career connected to Jagiellonian. Mm -hmm. University and that Rajinovich was uh, a prolific writer about various criminological and penitentiary mm -hmm. issues in Poland uh, before World War II and before he emigrated to uh, to to Britain. Uh, but of course, uh, he was not by no means the only one person involved in criminology in Poland uh, before the war, Professor. Stanisław Batavia, maybe uh, the Warsaw uh, criminologist, maybe here mentioned. So yeah. it is not true that criminology was uh, built up from the scrap after World War II in yeah. Poland. There was yeah. some uh, some uh, some tradition, uh, but it's probably also absolutely true that uh, let's say up till mid 1970s, mm -hmm. criminology existed practically only in Warsaw. Uh, there was not too much of, of criminological research after uh, in other in other uh, cities, and because of certain 
persons also, mm -hmm. Batavia was one of them, it was criminology oriented very closely towards the research on offender and the reasons of, of yes. behavioral aspects of, of, of crime. Uh, it was also at that time something what was not a particularly Polish feature that everyone was very, very interested in all yeah. communist countries in the problem of recidivism. Yes. And it's there was oh, the amount of research on recidivists was, was, was enormous. Uh, the one interesting thing is, I think, that um, this research at that time had practically no impact on penal law and practice of, of yeah. application yes. of penal law. It became of significance Till only after time. the change, only after the change, right, when the results of, of various pieces of research were, uh, became significant, let's say. It was also at that time tradition to do research on various legal institutions and they functioning in practice. Mm -hmm. There was some knowledge how certain uh, institutions of substantive penal law, or procedural penal law, uh, how do they mm, uh, work in practice? Are they effective or not? Uh, so Germans called this called this Rechtsstaatsachenforschung, mm -hmm. or research on legal facts, <laughs> let's yeah. say. Uh, and and this was something which was at that time quite 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 popular, uh, but generally. <clears throat> Now, in transformation time, yeah, or after transformation. transformation time. Yeah, the transformation was something very significant because I would say that before 1989, before the fall of Berlin Wall, etc., uh, there was very little demand mm -hmm. for results of criminological research uh, because communist authorities were just not very much interested in such mm -hmm. things. Uh, sometimes they pretended, I think, that they are interested, but the real impact was mm -hmm. rather limited, or there were clear limits or boundaries uh, which were impossible to overstep, because primacy of certain ideological, uh, political consideration precluded this. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the, the, the fall of the Berlin Wall and the fall of the communist system meant that, that uh, possibilities opened for criminologists having some real impact. And I would say that at that time, in the 1990s especially, mm -hmm. there was real demand for experts and expert knowledge was one crucial thing that academic lawyers, criminologists, generally academics mm -hmm. in Poland had very often some contacts at least with Western colleagues, some knowledge about Western research experience, how criminal justice systems mm -hmm. uh, in the West work, and as Poland aspired at that time uh, to, to membership in, in EU, in earlier in Council of Europe, in various unders, uh, others yeah. uh, European institutions. This knowledge was uh, something very, very uh, useful and important uh, because we could... For building the new... For building uh, the new, new system, system of criminal justice, yeah. mm -hmm. for reforming uh, criminal law. Mm, uh, that's how, because one of my special areas of special interests uh, are drugs and drug policies. Uh, and well, I would say that here again it was some sort of accident. I remember how I started to be an expert on, on those issues. Um, namely, there was a discussion about reforming drug law mm -hmm. in Poland around 1994, I think, uh, to, to adjusting it to certain European standards and, and uh, tendencies. Uh, and uh, they needed badly an expert knowing something about 
drug laws provisions in Western European countries, how certain things are regulated, uh, etc. Uh, and uh, Professor Andrzej Siemaszko, I remember this, uh, uh -huh. uh, made a telephone call to me and asked me whether I would be ready uh, to, to, to prepare some sort of expert opinion uh, on the comparative legal issues uh, in, in, in Europe. And I said, well, I knew at that time one thing. I had one book on comparative European legislation published at that time by Max Planck Institute uh -huh. <laughs> in Freiburg. Uh, so I had this source, but I was hardly expert. Uh, and I said this to Shemashko, look, I'm, well, I'm, I'm hardly expert on, mm -hmm. on this. Uh, but he said, anyway, but you know something. Uh, <laughs> and you have this book. <laughs> so use it <laughs> and do something about this. And that's how I started to, mm -hmm. to, 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 to become, I hope, some sort of real expert on, on this. But this was a very special time when, when, when certain experience and contacts with Western mm -hmm. colleagues and Western literature was of crucial importance because there was so huge demand for expertise in this area. Uh, so I remember uh, the, uh, an additional um, uh, problem uh, which we discussed uh, till to this time. And um, this is the, you know, um, observation about the statistical data of mm -hmm. uh, the crime. So the crime uh, just uh, after the uh, 1989, uh, just um, in the beginning of transformation time, mm -hmm. the crime went crime. up. Yep. Uh, and uh, in, um, as in Poland, uh, about 2005, we observed the drop yes. of crime. So, what is your opinion? Because this is the this is the problem in which we in Poland uh, discuss very intensely, yes, yeah, yeah. and as we now, as a criminologist, now this observe in uh, European countries. Yes, so yeah, the yeah. same that mm -hmm. the <coughs> criminality, uh, as we look at the uh, statistical data, um, drop. Yep. But we have uh, evidence uh, in the uh, international uh, survey of self-report survey, on victimization survey, so uh, what do you think about it? Yeah. Well, this of course, I, 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 I should say it probably uh, earlier that uh, during the 1990s and 20s, uh, the research on uh, relations between transformation, political, mm -hmm. economic, uh, social yeah. transformation and crime mm -hmm. uh, became a crucial area for, for, for Polish criminology and criminologists. Uh, and uh, this involved, of course, also attempts to explain uh, crime trends uh, and, and, and uh, related things. We must remember that, really, according to real, to according to official statistics, mm -hmm. the crime went up enormously in practically all Central and Eastern European yes. countries. It yes. became it's subject of enormous concern mm -hmm. for politicians, for the public. Uh, it was also clearly seen in research results regarding fear of crime, or at least you could see here clear-cut correlation that the growing crime uh, was correlated you positively about the fear yes, of crime. With, with fear of crime. Uh, well, uh, as a sociologist, I could say one uh, simple uh, thing. If you have a rapid uh, transformation, social change, mm -hmm. no wonder that crime goes up. <laughs> That's Probably that's some normal. That's we normal. Like well, that's say. that's normal. That's that's what you may expect. That's my favorite. In, in, my favorite. In, 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 Emil Durkheim. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you would expect in such yeah. time. That Durkheim is is of course uh, the classical uh, example here. Mm -hmm. uh, what is of course uh, probably obvious from from the point of view of let's say criminological knowledge. And I understand perfectly that from the point of view of politicians, uh, 
this is something completely different because politicians have to do something about yeah. this or mm -hmm. think that they have to, to do something about this. But nevertheless, mm, this growth of crime at that time was nothing uh, unusual, uh, although probably there were some additional factors typical for Poland, not mm -hmm. for other uh, Central and Eastern European countries. Uh, well, this was something what was not very often mentioned in public discourse in Poland, but we have to remember that around 1995, when the crime started to grow really uh, in, in, in Poland, a demography could play a significant role yeah. because around that time a significant baby boom entered most crime prone uh, age. Baby boom from 80s. From the beginning of, of 1980s, beginning of yes. Uh, 80s. Uh, and around 2005 this baby boom uh, group started to went out of this most yes. crime prone age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this may be one of the very important factors uh, contributing to growth and drop of crime. Politicians were, of course, arguing about changing penal law, increasing sanctions, uh, more deterrence, more incapacitation. Uh, yes. But those phenomena could have been completely independent from everything that politicians were manipulating uh, with criminal law. Uh, so. Uh, I think the same, so, <laughs> uh, but uh, the two questions more, uh, how do you, what do you think about drop of crime in contemporary world, <laughs> well, because that, it's not only in Europe. That's a good question, you may say that uh, you have this drop of crime, first it occurred in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. uh, during the 1990s already and well there is a huge discussion about this and sometimes it looks that criminologists in the United States are a little bit helpless in explaining this drop of crime. Uh, I say quite often to my students uh, uh -huh. that criminologists are often very good at explaining the growth of crime uh, uh, but it's difficult. But have sometimes problems <laughs> with explaining explain drop of crime. Mm -hmm. uh, well, but again, when when you look at certain things regarding, uh, let's say, social change and various phases of uh, phases of uh, social change, mm -hmm. uh, you may see that after those original years during the 1990s and at uh, uh, at the beginning of of this century, things started a little bit to stabilize, uh, and uh, and and this is somehow uh, you remember perfectly well that there was a research in Poland done uh, in 1960s about the impact of in the rapid industrialization yes. uh, on uh, crime it rates. Uh, this was uh, so rather micro scale. One of the etiology. Yes, because th those <laughs> regarded some towns or, or cities, etc. And there was a clear-cut pattern of growth of crime, stabilization and drop, and drop. And drop with uh, the, let's say, this building of this factory and, and uh, rapid changes ending, uh, mm -hmm. things were a little more or less coming back to, to normal, let's say, sometimes. So that's, that may be a similar yes, pattern. But I have other question. Uh, so what do you think uh, about the um, internet? Uh, and the yeah. internet uh, and the role of the internet well, uh, as a new place uh, of uh, criminality. Yeah. And maybe uh, so the criminality changed the place to the internet and we have no uh, this um, so um, uh, we have no this crime 
uh, in the statistics. Yeah, yeah that's absolutely a legit legitimate uh, thesis that that uh, internet uh, took off, especially juvenile offenders, especially juvenile. took them off the streets uh, and changed also profoundly crime patterns. They are not uh, involved anymore in traditional juvenile crime, yeah. uh, but mm -hmm. in something what is going on in, in internet. And this remains very often deeply hidden in dark figure. Yes, it, uh, and so um, how do you think, if you uh, uh, think about uh, uh, subjects, topics, uh, problems which you uh, researched uh, as a criminologist. Uh, if you uh, can, you find uh, find some uh, tema in which you uh, would like uh, to <laughs> research, but it was still to this time impossible. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are probably plenty of such such uh, such um, uh, areas. It's always uh, when I come to ESC conferences mm -hmm. and I have opportunity to, to listen to, to, to presentations, to lectures uh, regarding things uh, I don't uh, have contact with normally. Uh, that sometimes I become a little bit enlightened, let's say, and well, wow, that's the wonderful uh -huh. topic I would like to, mm -hmm. to do something. For example, today, today's plenary uh, on uh, life course life criminology, course and, criminology. And, and related things. It's, 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 in my opinion, a fascinating area. I never had anything to do with this, uh, but still, uh, that's something what, what would be probably uh, very interesting, uh, mm -hmm. very interesting for me. Also because of one fact that probably uh, in Poland we, we, we had very little research going in that direction uh, uh, or we never had such really longitudinal studies yes. as in US and in some yes, Western European countries. Yes, contemporary, but if you look at the uh, past and uh, in the um, time of the 60s or 70s in the Department of Criminology, yeah, especially the 60s. So the classical longitudinal studies, yeah, there were some, there uh, it were was some. made in, in the world. So, but of course, uh, <laughs> I, I agree with you because... <laughs> but uh, as I so said, inspiration... Life course criminology is... Uh, inspiration yeah. comes, comes very often from attending uh, ESC conferences. Yes, <laughs> and it is uh, it is we and it is why we now uh, in a, a point uh, criminology in Europe mm -hmm. and criminology in the United States, so American criminology. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you um, see or uh, what do you uh, see uh, as you look at the um, criminology in Europe? American criminology, what is different, what is common, uh, what is the uh, relationship uh, mm -hmm. between uh, two, uh, this uh, group of criminologists yeah. in Europe and in America? Well, first of all, it's probably true that criminology in the United States is, is established uh, discipline both in terms of teaching and research, mm -hmm. and uh, it exists, let's say, since, mm -hmm. since, since before World War II. Mm, and therefore, uh, position of criminology in the United States is probably uh, incomparable with any other country in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. The amount of criminological research done in the United States means also that it has a uh, huge impact on criminologies on other continents and, and other, uh, other countries. When, when, when we look at origins of criminology in many European countries, mm -hmm. Poland included, uh, examples of primarily probably some theoretical mm -hmm. uh, concepts but also empirical research 
uh, were of <laughs> enormous significance for what was going uh, in those countries. It was very often some attempts to replicate certain things American, to mm -hmm. test mm -hmm. American theories, uh, to, to adopt them to, to, to local uh, conditions, etc. And so for, 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 for many, many years, mm -hmm. this domination of US criminology was absolutely clear and, and very visible. Mm -hmm. But I think that uh, what's going on, thanks to European Society of Criminology, uh -huh. since 16 years in, Europe's, in Europe, uh, means that, that European criminology, I would uh, hesitate to say, becomes independent, uh, but still um, starts to, to build its own potential, uh, also in a way which is probably already, to a certain extent at least, typically European. Uh, so, uh, this is of course close cooperation, close mm -hmm. relationship, but I think that this earlier we had practically exclusively American impact on uh, European criminology. I think that it starts slowly to, to, to change and probably we may observe also some impact of European, European research, European criminology, European way of thinking about certain things uh, on, on American criminology and ESC creates here a fantastic exchange forum for, for, for this also because of the fact that relatively many American criminologists come to, 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 to um, the ESC conference. So you used a very important uh, phrase, uh, the way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Because the way of thinking is very important in yeah. each uh, our uh, thinking as a scientist, as a researcher, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. a constructed of the problem, constructed mm -hmm. of topics in which we analyze uh, yeah. as a criminologist. So, uh, 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 put your thinking <laughs> to, uh, to the time in which uh, you have been uh, president of uh, uh, European Society of uh, Criminology. Uh, it was 2007-2008. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, how you remember? Well, of course it was preceded by my membership in the ESC board as organizer of 2005 conference in Krakow. Okay. And this was a, let's say, pioneering time mm -hmm. for many things. First of all, uh, it was probably the first time that I got really engaged mm -hmm. in international research and scholarly organization, which was something very new for me. Mm -hmm. uh, there was this proposal to organize ESC conference in Krakow. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, uh, originally I was shocked a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, again, this was something absolutely new. I never did such, such mm -hmm. things, small seminars for for 10 people but not a yeah. conference such as ESC uh, and what was also quite important that it was the first ESC conference organized in Central Europe so this was yet another element of of, of pioneering uh, and that made me also a little bit more nervous probably yeah. uh, mm -hmm. because uh, we, we, we were mm, well we, had, we were the first and being the first yeah. is always a problem uh, there was also uh, one element that is 2005 uh, this this conference took place just a year after Poland and mm -hmm. a few other uh, Central European countries mm -hmm. became members uh, of, uh, of EU, of EU. Uh, so it was yet 
another uh, another yeah, uh, challenge. Yeah. Uh, so from that point of view, it was uh, really amazing and wonderful experience. Although let's say it involved also lots and lots of stress, but it is also well, there is also one another uh, aspect that ESC at that time was something completely different. Well, completely is probably too much said, but still it was different than today. Uh -huh. You must remember one thing that Krakow was quite huge conference by the standards at that time. Uh -huh. But we had 473 participants. This year, here in Münster, there was 1050 or something yeah. like this and there were already conferences like Porto with 1300 so, so it's two three times uh, mm -hmm. bigger uh, conference and of course manage to manage mm -hmm. such conference is something much much more difficult than than uh, than 10 years ago uh, in 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 Krakow so ESC was developing slowly and at the beginning, it was something completely different than today. Yeah, and what, what, how, how do you think the role of uh, European Society of Criminology now and from this uh, view from the past? Yeah, well, uh, you know, um, at that time, uh, uh, let's say, when, when you looked at membership of, mm -hmm. uh, of ESC, uh, there was one interesting thing that most members mm -hmm. uh, were people who were already involved sin since some time at least in criminological research. Uh, they usually had already some position or established position in criminological research and most of those names were more or less known in criminological community in Europe or uh, in, 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 in the world even. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at ESC today, you see what was the contribution. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's also the matter of generational yeah. change. Yeah? Generation uh, young is people are coming. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but you see how many uh, people, young people, young researchers, were attracted to criminology via ESC probably. Yes. That's uh, of course. It's also true that now you have uh, uh, master, PhD programs. Mm -hmm. That people there are much more young people and students who are involved in criminological research than 15 years ago. Uh, but I think that there is some sort of mutual impact. You know, on the one hand, criminal ESC inspires probably uh, people to open master or PhD programs to, to, to get involved in criminology uh, and this has impact on membership, on yeah. conference attendance and, and such and things. We, yeah, so uh, as you look at the European Society of uh, Criminology, how do you think a future of criminology in the Europe? Well, that's when, the when, 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 for us, for when, our discipline. <laughs> when, when you look at uh, last 15, 16 years, uh, you see that, well, criminology became something really important mm -hmm. in scholarly life uh, in Europe, and here the contribution of ESC is huge. And, well, uh, I hope mm -hmm. that this uh, trend will continue and there is also one uh, thing because still criminology in let's say Anglo-American world mm -hmm. is much better developed than in other uh, worlds let's say uh, but and therefore the impact of certain things American, but also certain things British, mm -hmm. uh, will remain very significant. Uh, but I would say that at the beginning of 
ESC existence, this dominance of Anglo-American criminology was much more visible than okay. these days. Than these days. Yes, yes. I, I, I think that criminologists uh, in, in other, from other countries, which not necessarily had 15 years ago a huge criminological research, research community and, and yeah, tradition, yeah. that criminology the expanded and so on. enormously in those countries. And I would say that contribution of ESC to this process was of crucial significance and importance. And, well, I hope, I think that this will, this will continue, this trend uh, established to the large extent, thanks to, to, to ESC. Yes, but uh, connected with the future in criminology, so uh, the um, last uh, very uh, special uh, question mm -hmm. and special problem, uh, gender and criminology. Um, yeah. So, what do you think about this tema? Uh, the, the, the well, <laughs> tema of gender is uh, is uh, uh, is exists in uh, criminology uh, researchers, and we have a lot of uh, uh, books and articles uh, about it. What do you think? Uh, is well, it of course, new. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's by no means new. Uh, if if you look at origins of criminology and. Uh, founding father of criminology, Cesare Lombroso, yes. and his book La Donna Delinquente. You see <laughs> that that uh, that already at that time mm -hmm. uh, this was uh, this was an issue, although probably discussed and 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 researched in a particular way, which which may be a little bit odd from uh, today's uh, mm -hmm. uh, perspective, uh, but still this. The problem of explaining uh, the differences in offending rate and patterns of offending between the genders is an absolutely legitimate and impo important uh, subject of mm, criminological research from various perspectives because either you may look at this either from traditional mm, let's say perspective related to to causes and origins of, of human yeah. behavior, etc., mm -hmm. like Lombroso did, uh, or from the point of view of social reaction, labeling theory, um, ideological, ideological. Uh, perspective, uh, differences uh, in uh, social position of both uh, uh, sexes, etc., etc. Et so there and is in civilization, yeah. and in in, in 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 civilization, and and uh, changes in, in in the role of social position, social status, and the roles played by by women in in, in contemporary societies are of course here. And of, the roles of, as, as an offender. And the offender, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, therefore, I think that that. Uh, feminist uh, perspective uh, in criminology mm -hmm. is something uh, of huge importance because, um, well, let's say <laughs> Lombroso, of course, was interested in this problem, but from very specific and I would say, as I said, odd uh, yeah. perspective. Uh, what what feminist perspective brings is something absolutely new and changing perception of, 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 of many, many things uh, related to crime, uh, criminal justice, and all this. Yes. Thank you very much. For me, it was very, very interesting. <laughs> um, uh, and this uh, occasion um, of changing uh, our thinking about criminology and European society of criminology in the future. Thank you very much. <laughs>